brothers and sisters. My name is Samuel Shropshire, and it's my privilege to be here with Dr. Safi Kaskas today. He's a director of the International Institute of Contemporary Quran Research. I worked with Dr. Safi on this interpretation of the Quran uh, that was completed about five years ago. It's an excellent contemporary American English interpretation of the Quran with over 3,000 footnotes uh, to the Bible. I did many of the footnotes. I also uh, asked many questions, reading, reading, reading the Quran. And it was this book that brought me to faith. I would, um, I'm here with Dr. Safi today to ask him a few questions. Uh, Dr. Safi, you completed this Quran translation about five years ago. Yes. Why do you want to go back to it? Well, Did you discover that there's something wrong with it? No, not at all. In fact, the Quran translation never had any negative reviews from anyone. In fact, it was certified by three Islamic universities in Khartoum who were invited to critique it. And based on that certification, it was chosen to be distributed in Africa by the African House for the printing of the glorious Quran. But a conscientious Quran translator's work is never ending task. I published my translation five years ago, as you know, but I continue to go back to it on daily basis with whatever thoughts and ideas that come to mind for the purpose of better presenting the translation of the word of Allah. What led you to think that this Quran translation needed continuous updating? I know I've, I've read Yusuf Ali's translation many times. Um, why do you think yours needs to be updated? Well, I observe that sciences, including human sciences, are moving forward. New discoveries are made every day. It is my assumption that our understanding of the Quran should always be based on the state of the art in human knowledge. Not doing that will be like cheating those who are reading the translation and not being fair and equitable to, to what Allah is trying to tell us. The Quran, after all, has a fixed text, but the meaning is very dynamic for the educated leader. Uh, this is the main reason that led me to decide that the task of always presenting a contemporary understanding of the Quran is vital if we are to truly serve Islam and Muslims. Uh, so how do you intend to proceed? Uh, always presenting the readers with a more updated contemporary understanding. Uh, how, do you can, how do you expect to proceed with this project? Well, uh, I came to a conclusion that no single human being can claim to have the ability to always have a contemporary translation of the Quran. You know, the Quran is a book of life. It talks about all sciences. And a human being's ability is limited to certain knowledge that he was able to acquire during his lifetime. But the Quran required the participation and contribution of scientists that come from various scientific backgrounds, social and pure sciences. Hence my decision to turn my personal project into an institution that will outlive me. An institution that can do justice to the translation of Allah's word, since all translations simply reflect the translator's understanding of the text, I decided to invite a group of scholars from the various fields of science to work under the umbrella of a newly formed institution of contemporary Quranic research to produce a periodically revised version of the Quran translation, along with academic articles and videos explaining the work done. There is more to it than just producing a book. You can always produce uh, 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 scientific papers, uh, produce uh, videos to tell people how you're arriving to, to those translations uh, get people, invite people to participate with you. This is this is the, the basic idea. So this institute that you've developed, this International Institute of 
contemporary Quran research will be will have a website. It will be online, and people will be able to contribute to your Quran project through that website. Well, actually, it will have more than a website. It'll have a portal. We see. I'm I'm talking about getting scientists from around the world, Muslim scientists from around the world, to read in the Quran and uh, observing what they're doing in their labs and coming back and seeing how that can explain what Allah is saying in the Quran. So the portal will enable scientists, Muslim scientists committed to this project to, from around the world to come in and go on re real time and work together, you know, to update to make the Quran contemporary all the time. And for this, we need a strict protocol that will allow certain people that are authorized to come in and do some changes, and others who are not authorized to simply leave their comments there. But it's for the first time in the history of the Muslim world, you are given all Muslims who are interested, and the Quran came for all Muslims, did not come only for the scholars, as you know. We are allowing all Muslims to have an opportunity to come and say, I believe this ayah mean this. It meant this to my life. It influenced me in this way or that way. It has this influence on my life. It changed my life because of one, two, three. And all this will be shared together, either in stories or in updating the meaning of the Quran or in developing articles about the, the, the Quranic sciences. All this will come together through a portal. So it's much more than a website. Alhamdulillah. Well, you know, it's been a blessing for me to know you. Uh, I've known you now for some 13 years. And um, God has led me here to Saudi Arabia to, to work with you on this project. Thank you. Um, We've also organized Muslim Voice for Peace and Reconciliation, yes. which is affiliated with your institute. Yes. And we're very proud to be associated with this project. What, is, what more do you need from people to make this a great success? Well, let me uh, give you first the steps we have taken so far uh, to make the institute a reality. Uh, for instance, there are several steps that are already taken during the last 30 years, that 30 days, I should say. I contacted His Excellency Muhammad Quraysh Shahab, the ex-minister of religious affairs in Indonesia, who is also the founder of the International Institute of Quranic Studies. And after explaining to him the vision and the mission of the project and the direction we intend to take, he agreed to unite our efforts especially after I send him a copy of my translation, and he and other people working with him went critically over it and told me that they, that they liked it very much. We are also forming a nonprofit branch of the Institute in, in Great Britain, and we already have uh, scholars and others working with us on this project. A global board will be formed as well as a local board. The Institute will, inshallah, be able to start producing results within a year. We, we need scholars to volunteer to come in and help us uh, complete this work. This is the first time any scholar around the Muslim world have a chance to come in and contribute to explaining his understanding of what Allah is saying in the Quran based on the branch of science that he specializes in. So together, we will have a complete idea. Again, a translation is always the translator understanding of the Quran. I tried it. I worked on it for six full-time years, uh, devoting all my time from Fajr prayers all the way to after Isha prayer. And I know not, one man cannot do the project on their own. I needed you to help me. I needed other scholars to help me. And you all did a fantastic job. But we need more than that. We need scholars in every field of science to join us. That's one thing. We also need uh, people that uh, would like the project to finance it, to donate money to it. Uh, you know, we, when, when the scholars come in to give us some time, we need to uh, compensate them for their time. 
Some will come as volunteers, other uh, that will have to write papers, that will have to, to, to give actually days of their time, need to be compensated. So we also need money. So uh, uh, people that are able to contribute money are welcome to come. People mm -hmm. that are able to contribute time, they, will, they are welcome to come. We also need uh, people that will help us with secretarial work, people that will help us with IT knowledge, people that will help us set the, uh, the, the, the whole setting together and make sure that it is uh, connected worldwide. So all, all this is needed. Uh, right now, we, I basically have the uh, legal structure. I have some important people who decided to join, but we need a whole lot more. So anybody who can donate anything are most welcome to come in and, and help. Now, I encourage your brothers and sisters, if you've, if you've been listening to this short video, please give generously to this project. At the end of the video, you'll find instructions on how to give, and we're very grateful to you for your support. This is a, this is a world-changing project, and I'm very happy to be affiliated with it and to have Dr. Safi Kaskas as a very close friend and ally. God bless you, Safi. Thank you. God bless uh, Iman Thank and you. your work and your board. I That's pray that this will be a great success. Thank you. Actually, all donation maybe should go to the Muslim Voice of Peace uh, and, and Reconciliation. And then from there, because it's a nonprofit organization, and from there it can be distributed to those who, uh, who, who need it the most. Thank you very much, Sam. Sure. All they have to do is go to our website then, mvpr.org. That's M, like Mary, V, Victor, P, Paul, R, Roger, dot org, O-R-G, and click on Donate, and mention when you contribute that this is for Institute, for the Institute. Uh, all funds going to that, uh, to that website, to that account, will then be forwarded to Dr. Safi and the Institute. May God bless you, Dr. Safi. Thank you, May Sam. God give us wisdom as we seek to serve him in changing the world Thank you. Uh, through yes. the Quran. Indeed, absolutely. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Wa alaikum salam.